Hey guys, we're here doing a follow-up video to our uh, video that you guys may have seen, uh, which was the Tesla S um, boost package install. And today behind me, I've got a Tesla Model S, but this is the D model. And uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm sure if you do, you're watching this, you may have already purchased one of these vehicles. I'm wondering if this kit that we make will actually fit. So we're here to basically show you the differences um, and some installation methods. If you haven't seen the original video, it's a really good step-by-step -step, um, on how the package actually goes in and installs. This video that we're gonna be doing is mainly gonna pertain to the differences in the uh, non-D and D model. Uh, however, the installation method that we're gonna show you can really be applied to both, because really the big differences between the installation on the D and the non-D model is really simply just where the amplifier is gonna be uh, mounted and installed. All the rest of the wiring and everything still pretty much remains exactly the same except the amplifier location. Included in the package as you can see uh, is the new BDA uh, 751, the Audio Control LC2i, uh, the NVX X Kit 42 which is your complete amplifier wiring kit, uh, and of course the NVX uh, Boost Tesla Boost enclosure which is a, a perfect fit uh, to this vehicle. Uh, you may have noticed that uh, this particular amplifier is new to the line. The um, other package that was out before actually came with the JAD 1200 -1, which was a 1200 watt monoblock. Uh, the BDA 750.1 is actually uh, just as good uh, as the JAD 1200 -1. However, it is a little bit of a better match to the power rating of the woofer that's included and the, uh, the boost enclosure. So if you already have one of the original kits, you don't need to upgrade. There's nothing you need to change. Uh, just obviously going forward, we've designed and created a amplifier specifically for some of our vehicle specific uh, enclosures, our boost line of enclosures. All right guys, so we're here in the back of the uh, 85D here. So just to show you that the car is exactly the same on the back side. We're gonna go ahead and remove this cover, move this out of the way so we can kind of let you get a better idea of the cubby hole. And uh, as you can see, we still have our standard cubby that will house the uh, boost enclosure that will fit in there nicely. And if you'll notice right below it, you still have a empty cavity back here. You got plenty of space. So this is where we're gonna go ahead and install the uh, BDA 751 uh, monoblock amplifier. There's plenty of space down below there. Now, a lot of people don't like the idea of actually uh, screwing uh, and mounting to the uh, sheet metal. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're actually going to pull the uh, OEM uh, trunk liner up um, and we're going to cut a piece of um, half inch MDF that will go in and then the carpet will go over that. So that way, uh, once we actually mount the amplifier, we'll be mounting it into the MDF and not screwing through the body of the car. Now take in mind, this is just an option. Um, surely you can mount the amplifier wherever you like, but we found this to be a good location. It's right next to the enclosure. Um, and unfortunately in the Tesla Model S, there's really not a whole lot of other room uh, under the seats or anything like that. So for an average size amplifier, there's really only a few locations that would work really well, this one being one of them. And this also can apply to the uh, D model and non D model. So if you don't want to mount the amplifier up front on a non D model, you still have the option of putting it back here. Okay guys, so like I said, this is gonna be more focused on just the alternative amp installation location for the D model. Uh, like I said earlier, obviously it can also apply to the non-D. If you don't wanna install the amplifier underneath the hood in the cubby, you still have the option of mounting the amplifier in the back underneath the enclosure. Um, for a full detailed step-by-step, -step, I would encourage you to watch the other video which is a really good video on instructions and how to install and dismantle the car to run all your cabling. Um, the same methods are gonna be used in the D and non-D model. However, like I said, this particular video is really just gonna focus on an alternative location to mount the amplifier. So just like any other vehicle, we obviously wanna start removing all the panels. You just need to remove what's necessary. Uh, sometimes people wind up taking apart more of the car than they need to. In this video, you'll get a good idea of what you need to take apart to have access to be able to run all those cables uh, cleanly and nicely. But basically, we're gonna take it apart, we're gonna run those cables, we're gonna uh, connect and mount our amplifier, 
uh, install the woofer. We're going to test and uh, tune the, uh, the system, and then we're going to basically reassemble and be done. All right, guys, we're basically at a quick little stopping point after we've taken some of the car apart where we can kind of show you uh, where you would typically tie into for your audio signal uh, from the factory audio system. Now hopefully you already have an idea of which audio system you purchased when you bought your Tesla. So you're obviously going to have your premium audio system and your base model audio system. I found the majority of people out there typically have the base model from my experience so far. However, um, I definitely want to encourage you to watch our original video which is definitely more of a detailed step by step like I said earlier. In that particular video the system that we put in there was actually the standard base model audio system. This particular uh, 85D actually has the premium system so I'm just going to quickly point out the two different locations where you would tie in so right off the bat after we've got all this uh, taken apart right behind this uh, right behind the steering wheel to the left you'll see this is the factory amplifier that's the big giant plug with the purple uh, quick disconnect lever um, I went ahead and pulled out uh, from the loom two of the wires that you would need to tie into for this particular application being the premium audio system. Those two blue wires, one's solid blue and one is blue with a black stripe and that is your subwoofer audio output from the factory amplifier. That's the wires that we would actually use to tie into the LC2i for this particular application. At the same time I just took a quick minute to actually go ahead and pull down. As you can see this harness, this thing was actually just tucked back up behind there and I just went ahead and nicely just quickly pulled it down. This harness right here goes into your front left door. You can see your white and white black. That is your front left speaker. Um, that would be one of the channels you would tie into if you had the base model audio system. On the opposite side of the car, on the right hand side, you'll see a plug looking similar to this, which is going to contain your gray with gray black, which is your front right for this particular vehicle. So that would be your front left and front right you would tie into for your base model audio system. Behind the dash and to the left, you'll see the factory amplifier and you'll have your blue with blue black. Um, and that would be your subwoofer output that you need to tie into for your premium audio system. Okay, now that you guys gotten a little bit of a closer look at the uh, different wiring configurations that you would tie into for signal for your LC2i, um, I just want to make note that it's always 100% necessary to always test the wires that you're tying into before you actually do it just in the event that the actual manufacturer makes changes. So, so far I haven't seen in the Teslas that I've done any changes in their wire colors that they're using, but that doesn't mean that they won't uh, at some point ever change them. So it's always a good idea to reference and check the wires that you're tying into for signal uh, before you actually do it. Another plus in installing the amplifier in this location is that there's actually a factory grounding point which is really nice. You don't actually have to drill any additional holes or anything. You can you just remove this bolt, there's a nice little stud, clean the paint off and just attach your ground, a great grounding point, really close to the amplifier so it's really easy for you to just ground your amp and be done. Okay guys, what you can see that I did here is I cut out a piece of insulation underneath the factory carpet in the cubby. I've traced it on a piece of half inch MDF 
which like I said at the beginning, uh, a lot of people do not like to screw their amplifier down into the body. So the reason why we're doing this is so that way this will fit right back down in there. I would recommend um, attaching the piece of wood with either some double stick tape, uh, some liquid nails or some silicone, let it dry. Once it's dry, that's nice and secure. You can flop the carpet right back over the, the wood that you just laid down. And now you have a nice solid surface to mount your amplifier to and you're screwing into the wood instead of the body. All right, so there you have it. You definitely can see that the NVX boost package for the Tesla Model S can be installed in the D model, which is for dual motor. You can see the difference under the hood. It's clear as day, there's no cubby. So we showed you how you can install it in the back left quarter panel underneath the boost enclosure. Uh, you also, if you have a non-D model, can also install the amplifier just as you saw in this video underneath the enclosure as well, but you still have the option of installing it in the non-D model under the hood.